Hello everyone, welcome to my series on neural networks from scratch. So in this series, uh, my goal is to explain what actually happens in a neural network and implement it from scratch using just Python. So in the first part, uh, we will discuss about some notations that are used in neural networks and the feed forward process, which is used to compute the output of a neural network. In the second video, we will discuss about the cost function, gradient descent, and learn about the backpropagation algorithm. So finally, in the last video, we will put everything that we learned in the first two videos together and implement our own neural network from scratch. So let's start. Let's first quickly see uh, what happens in a neural network and how it learns. So we have inputs, uh, hidden layers, and output layers. And the input is propagated through all the hidden layers to reach the output layer. At the output layer, we compare the output produced by our network with the actual output and we calculate how different it is, right? So we call this as the cost. We propagate this cost back into our network so that all the parameters that are inside our layers are tuned so that it produces an output that is closer to the actual output, right? So this process repeats until the cost is a very small value. And this is when we can say that our neural network has learned something. So now let's look at feed forward. Feed forward is the process where the inputs are propagated through the neural network, starting from the input layer, through the hidden layers, and finally it reaches the output layer. So before we get into feed forward, let's quickly take a look at how an artificial neuron works. So we have an input X and let the output be A. We have a weight W associated with this input and a bias B. So to find the output A, let's consider some variable Z, which is equal to the weight times the input plus the bias. And now we can write the output as an activation function applied to Z. So this activation function basically decides whether the uh, neuron should fire or not. So we can represent a neuron as weight times x plus b and apply the activation function so this neuron consists of two computations basically one is to calculate this equation and two is to compute the activation function so next uh, let's take a look at the notations that we'll be using throughout the series so we have a very simple neural network uh, with two layers so this is layer one and this is layer two and let the input be x and the output be y bar okay we'll be using superscripts for the layer number and we'll be using subscripts for indexing so remember this we'll be using uh, this notation throughout the series so this is layer one so the weights associated with this input in layer one would be w1 with the one in the superscript similarly the bias and the output of this neuron would be A1. And similarly, this would be W2 since this layer 2, B2 and this output would be A2. And to calculate the value of this A1, I can write Z1 with superscript 1 equal to W1 times X plus B1. And so A1 equal to the activation function applied to Z1. So let sigma here be any activation function. Uh, we'll talk about activation functions in detail later. So let's uh, find out the output A2 of this neuron. So I can write Z2 is equal to the weights, that is W2, times the input to this neuron is actually A1, right? The output of the previous neuron. So that is A1 plus B2. And so the output A2 would be the activation function applied to Z2. And this A2 is actually equal to our output Y bar, since this is the output of the last layer or the output layer. So now what about the notations in this case where we have multiple inputs? Here also I can write the weights as W with superscript one because this belongs to layer one. And since this weight is associated with the first input, I can use the subscript one, two and three here. So we are using the subscripts for indexing here. Everything else is basically the same. The bias would be B1, output is A1. And here it's going to be B2 and just one weight here. So it's W2 and A2. 
So here let's uh, try and find the value of A1. So that would be Z1, W11 X1 plus W12 X2 plus W13 X3 and plus the bias B1. And A1 would be equal to the activation function applied to this. So you can see that um, we are basically multiplying the weights associated with each input and finding the sum. So this computation, okay, instead of doing it element by element, we can use the dot product to find this. So let's say if I represent my input as a column vector and my weights as another column vector. So here I can rewrite this computation as the transpose of weight vector dot product with my input vector plus the bias okay by the way these are all vectors right and why the transpose because both are column vectors and to find the dot product uh we need to find the transpose so that this is a row vector and this is a column vector so this would be one one w one two one three and x1 x2 and x3 so the answer of this dot product would be w11 into x1 plus so this is the same as this element wise product sum that we are finding here so we can rewrite this entire equation as z1 vector is equal to w1 transpose dot product x vector plus b and so a1 would also be the actuation function applied to z1 so keep this concept of dot product in mind we'll use this very soon to discuss feed forward so now consider this case where we have uh, multiple inputs as well as multiple neurons in the hidden layer so let's see how we can represent the weights in this case so i'm going to number these neurons as one two and three the weight associated with this input and this neuron would be w1 in superscript because it's layer one and this is going from one to one right so one one similarly the weight associated with the first input and the second neuron would be w112 the first input and the third neuron would be w113 in a similar way we can represent the weights associated with each input and each neuron and here the bias would be b11 b12 and b13 and also the outputs would also be similar right okay so now since we know the notations we are ready to discuss feed forward so basically feed forward consists of that single equation that is the weight times input plus the bias and pass it through an activation function this is applied to all the layers in the network so let's see how we can apply it uh, into this type of a network okay so as we discussed we know that this weight is 1 1 1 w 1 2 right if these were 1 2 and 3 okay so let's try and write the output of this neuron that would be a 1 1 so with the concept of the dot product that we discussed earlier i can write this as this uh, weight vector dot product with the input vector right similarly i'm going to write the value of z for each of these neurons okay so this would be a12 so you can see that i've uh, written the value of z if i consider this whole thing to be a matrix okay so this is my weight matrix and let's say instead of doing this three times i just did it once with the input right so if i find the dot product of this entire weight matrix let's call it w with my inputs i would get this times this plus this times this plus this times this so that is so for the second and third rows also i would multiply this element wise and add those products together right so finally i'll end up with a matrix that looks like this and now you can see that this is the same element wise uh, operation that we were doing earlier where when we had like a single neuron in this layer right so i can add my biases also to this which would also be a vector so b11 is the bias associated with this b11 b12 and b13 so let's call this whole thing that is the dot product of the weight matrix with the input plus the bias 
as z1 since this for layer 1 and so my output from layer 1 would be a1 is equal to the activation function applied to this z1 which is a column matrix that consists of three elements right so this activation function would be applied to each one of these elements my answer would also be a column matrix right and this column matrix would actually be my a11 a12 and a13 which would be the input to my next layer so we are using the concept of matrix dot products here to eliminate the need for finding the element wise product and adding those together and in this way we have made our computations extremely faster and more intuitive to understand right so let's uh, generalize all this and let's uh, write a general equation for feed forward so consider a neural network with an n-dimensional input and l layers numbered 1, 2, up to l and its output y. So we can write the generalized equation for feed forward z of l which corresponds to any layer here is equal to the weights for that layer dot product with the output from the previous layer which would be the inputs in my first layer plus the bias of that layer and finally the output of this layer would be the activation function applied to every element in ZL. Now uh, let's talk about the shape of the weight matrix. The shape of the weight matrix can be given by the number of rows would be equal to the number of neurons and the number of columns would be equal to the number of inputs that are coming into this layer to which the weight matrix belongs to. So only if this condition is satisfied, we can find the dot product. So when we find the dot products, we will have neurons input dotted with A, which would have the shape, the number of inputs and one, right? A single column. The number of rows would be the number of input and a single column. So this is a fundamental property of matrices where the number of columns in the first matrix should be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. Only then this dot product can be done. Uh, so this is important to keep in mind because while writing code and implementing this neural network, most of the errors would be happening because uh, this property is violated and this is very useful for debugging our code. So, so far we've been discussing about a single input sample and a single output of that sample. But in a real world scenario, we would have a large number of samples, uh, let's say M input samples and M outputs corresponding to each of those samples. In this case also, we do not have to run a for loop or any other loop to calculate the output of each sample. We can uh, do it in just these two lines since we are using matrices. So when we have a single sample, my input would have the shape n rows and a single column, right? Where n is the dimension of each of my input. So in the case of m samples, so let's say this is sample one, this is sample two, and let's say this is sample m. So the input to my network would be a matrix with this shape, right? So that is n rows and m columns my output would also have the shape y1 y2 up to ym that is m rows and a single column where each element corresponds to the output of each of these samples so this is another advantage of using matrices to define this equation of feed forward the entire computation can be carried in a fast and efficient way using just these two equations so this is it for this video uh, in the next video in the series, we will talk about the cost function, uh, gradient descent and backpropagation. And finally, uh, we will implement this uh, from scratch using Python.